So this video is going to cover some hard troops and going into some stats because I had a little bit of a hiatus. I think it would be a perfect time to discuss some topics in this video that I'm going to reveal. Um, as I know it's been a while since I haven't posted, but that doesn't mean I haven't been keeping an eye on things. I have. So you've had your fill with the Fallen Shape. The expansion's been out long enough. People have digested it. We've now into the episode structure. Uh, the episode structure, fun fact, has put me on a hiatus because I've just been that mad with the game, I've just dropped Destiny 2 for a bit. That's what's basically happened. Um, and there's a number of factors for that. The episode formula has been a lie. It is almost sort of scammed players, in my opinion, and has not changed the formula from what Seasons was prior to the final shape launching this has been a big thing with me it's actually made the seasonal formula worse we are now in a worse formula than what we was before final shape before final shape you got four seasons a year right you're now getting three bigger seasons but the time getting it into three portions for each episode of echoes so they are draining the player base with these episode echoes, right? I also pointed out, and a lot of people didn't want to sort of believe me, but I made a video about it. I was the first to point this out, or one of the first, not the first, but one of the first to point out the shoddy seasonal XP rank system. This video in particular, if you didn't watch it, go and watch that. Because it's absolutely true, right? You're, you're gated at each act to a seasonal rank. So act one was rank 100. This act you're in now, Act 2, you are gated, you're, you're time gated on XP when you get to rank 150. Yeah? It, the, the XP gains are different. Uh, I'm not going to go into that because that will take over this video. You just need to go and watch that one if you don't believe me. And some people didn't believe me. But yet Paul Tassi wrote an article about it a week later saying, oh yeah, you can't level, you can't over level on the um, XP uh, battle pass anymore. And then all of a sudden, everyone believes it. But well, people didn't believe me when I made the video about it. You've got to start looking into stats properly, not like taking me for granted and say, oh, you're talking rubbish and stuff. I wasn't. I'd done the research. I was looking at it, and I saw exactly what the problem was, made a video about it, told people only 10,000 people caught an eye on that. Um, some people it doesn't bother, I guess, but some people it does, and it did bother me. Um, and that was shoddy. It, it's shoddy game design. It's ridiculous. So not only that, but the seasonal story for the episodes haven't been good. I'm sorry, they haven't been good. And the way that they're cutting it up, slicing it into three parts, yeah, for each episode. Now, I know they're going to change this and they're going to allow you to play the full story in the next echo episode echoes. They're too late, man. They should have done that from the get-go. With the first act. After Final Shape, we should have come fresh into in the in the fresh episode Echoes and let us play the whole damn thing rather than it being weekly time gated. It's a massive problem. But they're addressing that with the next episode. Right? Not, not the act, but the next physical episode that we get later on. So I want to come to Glad's post, and I know it was like last week or a few days ago, but um I want to read out what he said. Because even though he's not a regular Destiny 2 player nowadays, he understands IPs. He understands how important a new IP or new game launch is to people, to players, right? Because he is a person who multi he's, he's streaming multiple games. He's not identity to one game. Yeah, he's doing multiple. So I think it's a good take from him because he has the ability to say this because he's not just, he's not pushing you a narrative. He's not trying to sell you anything. So what he says will be what his opinion is, which is what I like. Whether it's uh, drastic or not, well, I actually don't mind drastic takes or hot takes. I actually like them because they're at least honest and we want the truth. I'm more, I'm, I would rather the pursuit of truth rather than trying to sell you a false narrative which some destiny 2 youtubers are selling you 
a false narrative and they want the train to keep going. Don't you understand how this works? Some of the Destiny 2 YouTubers are millionaires. They're millionaires, some of them. And you just don't even understand or realize what's going on. They want the train to keep going. They want the train to keep going so that the money keeps coming in because that's what the world's about is money. Right? Whereas from Glad's point of view, his success is not determined by Destiny 2 because he's moved on. Right? So I almost definitely like that he's given us a, a truthful take. We, we, is it extreme? It might be. But it's at least truthful. He says this. I'll say what others won't. Destiny's new episodes are just renamed seasons. It's a way to similar cadence and model. It's a marketing tactic to rename things to spark excitement in an exhausted game. Destiny needs a complete restart, new everything, nothing carried over. There's two elements to this. Number one, what I just told you a few minutes ago about the episode's model being tired and actually worse than seasons, in my opinion, and he's saying it's similar cadence. In actual fact, it's, it's, it's a worse cadence. The cadence now is time getting you every few weeks, right? At least with the old seasons, you got the season and you could just grind it, yeah? I know that the quest was weekly gated, but at least you could do that, right? Whereas now it's like, you're not only that as well, the artifact mods, you're getting a new artifact system every few weeks, which means it doesn't give you enough time to bond with your artifact mods so much. Because then you've got more artifact mods and then more artifact mods, and then you don't care about anything because everything's reusable, recyclable. So he's right. The cadence is is basically similar, and the model is just what ep seasons are. They've repackaged the content to sell it to us, and it's worked because even I bought it. But I bought it because I was scared about the dungeon keys. That's why I bought it. So my reasons are a little different. I knew that there was going to be something off about these episodes when the farm before the farm shape came out. He's saying it's a marketing tactic. Definitely. And this is the final bit, which I've been saying this. I've been saying this since Beyond Light. I've been saying it for the last four years now. I've been saying this for the last four years, not just this year. Destiny needs a complete restart. New everything, nothing carried over. That means all your weapons in your vault, that stuff stays in D2, just like the stuff in D1 stays in D1. People's argument with that is, though, oh, well, they'll just repackage it and give us it again, like Telesto and Galahorn and all the exotics and stuff. That's, I understand that argument, but it needs to be a point where we get a new IP, a new game launch. I know this because of people that I talk to. People who experienced Destiny 2 in 2017 have never let that go. People who played and, and quit, they've never touched Destiny 2 since. And they say, oh, that tired old game, who plays that? Why would you? So Destiny 2 has a bad stigma attached to it that Destiny 1 didn't have. Destiny 1 had an amazing stigma attached to it over its three-year span from 2014 to 2017, which isn't a long time, by the way. But it has a good... There's a lot of nostalgia for the Destiny 1, although Destiny 2 is a better game than D1, but the cultural impact that Destiny 1 had is much more important to, what the, to, to the industry than what D2 was. D2 is just D2, and it's just a... It's just a amalgamation of, like, parts and it's just like it's it, it hasn't hit the heights that it could have done if they got the launch correct they screwed the launch up that bad that it had a bad stigma attached to it and it still has that there's still people to this day that won't try d2 because there's other options for them to play so glad's basically saying a, a new restart so whether it be a destiny 3 or a destiny online Right, I would be a fan of either. Like, if they wanted to do a Destiny Online type thing, um, but at the same time, what's the point in that? Because a lot of the D one stuff is in D two, anyways. You've kind of got that. So, in my opinion, it needs a new IP. And Destiny Frontiers is not a new IP. It's got the D two logo on it, so it's just an expansion to Destiny two, and that's going to be twenty twenty five. That's going to make the game Destiny 2 really old. And these, these new games that are coming out and Destiny's time is getting shorter and shorter and shorter because there's new games going to be coming that are going to end up 
beating it out in the looter shooter genre and that's happening right now and I'm going to show you it. So on these three tabs here, okay, I've got all the stats for PC, Xbox, PlayStation, right? For the three games that I'm talking about specifically are The First Descendant, which is a looter shooter. Warframe, which is a looter shooter. It's in the looter shooter genre. And Destiny 2, which is in the looter shooter genre. I know that there's other adverbs and titles that you can give Destiny 2. But let's just not bog down the video too much with that stuff. Let's just say, right, those three games are looter shooters. So out of the three, which is the best one for numbers on PC, PlayStation, Xbox? Right, so if we've got the Steam charts, most played games, this is as of today, right? You've got Counter-Strike, Dota 2, PUBG, Banana, etc. Elden Ring is number six, uh, understandably, because of the cultural... This is what I was on about with the D1 cultural impact. Elden Ring doing the same thing. There was a massive cultural impact that happened when Elden Ring came out. And that stigma attached to the game, the good stigma that is, has carried on. The new DLC come out, it's carried on. Elden Ring has been a massive success and it's elevated gaming. Yeah, D2 hasn't elevated gaming. It hasn't had any cultural impact. That's just giving you an example. One human, a new survival game. I'm not interested in this at all, so I'm not talking about it. GTA 5, a 60-year-old game at 10th place on PC. How is it doing it? When GTA 6 comes out next year, these games, all of them, will be pointless. Even Elden Ring. Because, because of what Rockstar does, they elevate gaming. They, there's a cultural impact. When a new GTA comes out, a new mainline one, and that'll be it. All the other developers will be like, looking from a distance saying, oh shit, we need to up our games. GTA 6 has took over the world. And that's what's going to end up happening when GTA 6 eventually launches. So, when that it's going to be D-Day when that happens. But, 10th, 11th place is the first descendant. Right? So, here's your numbers here. So, on Steam, it's 11th place. Where the hell's Destiny 2 at? 23rd place. By the way, First Descendant's got 1, 2, 6 here, and Destiny 2 has 54. So, it's more than double. It's a good chunk more than double. Right? That's a huge difference. Now, First Descendant is free to play. Destiny 2 is free to try. Free to try. It's not a free to play. See, with Destiny 2, it's a triple A game where it follows that model of pricing, but it's also got this free to play element. So they've got both systems in place, right? Whereas first it sounds like, no, we are free to play, but you have a store and you can buy stuff. And Warframe does the exact same system as what first is does. And a lot of people have all first is for this, but just ignore the store, dude. It's really easy just to ignore it. I have, I have, I, I think it's easy just to ignore it. It's free to play as well. And I also think buying the Battle Pass in this game is a good way to support this game. Buy the Battle Pass. I bought the Battle Pass. And actually, I've enjoyed the Battle Pass in this game. I've, I'm leveling it up right now. I'm nearly rank 100. So, that's where Destiny 2 is. So, where's Warframe? So, Warframe is 24. So, that's where Warframe is, right? So, if... I'm going to look into these stats a bit more in depth and show you the charts, but we'll move on. So that's where your positions are. So for PC, versus Senna wins. Let's see for console. So for the top 100 games for the last 30 days on PlayStation, Elden Ring, number one, obviously. Fortnite, I mean, you can't beat Fortnite. It's, it's, for, it's a game for kids. And when there's a popular game for kids, it always does well. Just, just like Minecraft does. It's, adults do play it, but it's predominantly for kids. GTA 5, it's always going to be good. Then you got FIFA, and then you got this. So where is First Descendant? Well, First Descendant is ninth place on PlayStation. With it being the best looter shooter on PlayStation. It's the best looter shooter performance-wise right now, as of today, this month. First Descendant is the best performing looter shooter on console. On PlayStation. Yeah? Then you've got Destiny 2 at 13th place. So it's still holding its own, but... It's not doing all that well. Like, you know, we haven't got, a, you know, a lot of good games on PS5. PS5 has been a bad generation for games. 
Don't forget that. But Destiny 2 was established before PS5. And Destiny 2 got the PS5 upgrade. So Destiny 2 should be top 5, in my opinion. And it's not. Because it's underperforming with its seasons. And its cadence is that it does really well on new big expansions. But outside of those new big expansions, Destiny 2 is a dead weight. Sorry, it's a hard truth. To, a better pill to swallow. You've got to swallow it. It is the truth. So now we look for Warframe. So Warframe's not a game that people play on PS5. Warframe's doing decent. And they announced the Soul Frame stuff the other day. There was the Tenocon and all that. The Warframe 99. That's going to pick that up. But yeah, it's not doing so good on PlayStation Warframe. I think truly because Warframe's just better to play on PC. That's just how it is. I play it on PS5. Warframe, when I have done, and I've enjoyed my experience with it. But let's be honest, I think P it's more akin for PC players. Borderlands 3, though, 27th place, is a looter shooter as well. I'm going to tell you why this is doing well, because it's free right now on PlayStation Store. That's good, right? Not only that, the Borderlands franchise as a whole is a very good one. Yeah, we just need Borderlands 4. We need it. It's, it's suffering from the same problems that Destiny 2 is. It needs a new IP. We need it needs a, it needs Borderlands 4. I guarantee you, when they launch a Borderlands 4, it will do extremely well, and it'll it'll steal players from the other looter shooter genres like First Ascent and Destiny 2, Warframe for a little while. And it may hold some of them, and then some of them might bleed off for a couple of weeks and back to their original games. But that's how this works. So Borderlands 3. I played it, I enjoyed the game. I don't think it's the best game out of the three, but um, look at that. It's 27 plus, and it's an old, tired game. Um, actually, it's newer than what Destiny 2 is, technically. It came out in 2019, I believe. Destiny 2 came out in 2017, so there is that. But, yeah, that's actually interesting to see Borderlands 3 there. So now Xbox. This is just a general chart. This is ending July 14th, so this is last week. Bear that in mind. Right, so number one, Minecraft, Fortnite, always, Call of Duty, always, FIFA, the the general culprits. Number five, though, is First Ascendant. So it's the number one looter shooter on Xbox. Right? It's the number one, easily. Um, Destiny 2 being 10th place, so it's doing a little better on, on Xbox than it, as opposed to Steam, because there's more competition on Steam, let's be honest. But it's doing okay on Xbox, but... It's just doing okay. It's not doing what First Ascendant is doing. Warframe, I, I mean, I don't even think it's on this list. It is. It's 38. Again, Warframe's not popular on consoles, if we're being honest. It's more popular on Steam. Another thing, Destiny Tracker is something I always check in. Something that you can actually check for just a, a good informational tool, just for general. Like PvE players yesterday was 677.7k. This isn't good. As opposed to what the final shape numbers was pulling, which was above 1 million for PvE players. It was 1.2, 1.4. Like, I'm not talking about at its peak. I'm just talking about when I remember checking it on odd days during the first two weeks of final shape. I was seeing 1.4, 1.2 mil for PvE players. PvE, I'm not, I wasn't tracking PC or Crucible players. It was PvE because obviously that's what I'm interested in the most. So, we're, we're less than, we're, we're, ha we're half of what we was at Final Shape, roughly. Yeah? Um, and that number's going to get lower and lower until the next expansion comes out, which will be, or the next episode of Echoes comes out. Then you'll see us peak again. You'll see the peak again, but then it'll lower again. That's just historically how Destiny 2 stats have been. I always check Destiny 2 uh, tracker. So... Now that you've seen all that, let's look on like Steam charts. See, PlayStation doesn't have access to this stuff in the way that Steam database does. Steam database tracks everything. We don't have a database for PlayStation and Xbox in the same variety of to check active current player base numbers and stuff, but Steam does. So that's why I'm focusing on the, the Steam the Steam database. So if you go to if we go to Destiny 2, so 54,000, right? So right now, active, 53,261 right, players right now. And you can see the graph for the last week um, has been steady, right? Let's go to one month. See, look at the numbers. This is a, See, what I'm talking to you in words is what's happening in this graph. Look at it. The peak, right? this was the peak one month ago, doing, re doing really well here. 
and it's like, oh, episode Echoes comes out. Oh, oh yeah, there's some problems. And look at the look at the trend and graph for Destiny Two. It's a problem, man. It's a real problem. Look at it on a broader scale. Look at this. Really poor. Really poor. Then you have your final ship things, right? Then really poor, poor, poor. So this is exactly what I've been saying. I don't need to tell you every single number to, to show you this. The graph visually shows you the bumps and grinds of Destiny 2. It's just showed you. I've just showed you it there. I've just showed you it. So let's go to First Descendant now. So active. We've got nearly, as I say, you've got more than double players active right now on Steam. They had a small bump here for whatever reason. First 18th of July. Is that because the that a patch though? Was there a patch on that day? I can't mind. There was a patch, wasn't there? So maybe that's why that was. Um, but yeah, I don't think it has access. It doesn't have access because it hasn't been out a full month yet. So it only has access to the, the last week. But look at the numbers they're holding. This graph is really steady. That was because of a patch. I'm almost certain that was because of a patch. Yeah. So look at this. Steady, 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 steady. The numbers are holding for this game. And it will only go higher. When we get the new um, content for First Descendant, which they're going to release a new mega dungeon and stuff this fall, new Descendants, new Descendant storylines, new Colossus. There's like there's a roadmap planned for First Descendant, and each time you get these new content drops, which are going to be frequent as well, you're going to get player hikes, where some of those players after after its launch will leave, but some of them will hold, and the numbers will just gradually increase. So the game's healthy. According to this, it's healthy, and it's had a really good launch, right? Now, you think about this. You compare Destiny 2's launch to the first Descendants launch. Which one done better? The first Descendants launch has been much smoother than what Destiny 2's launch was. First Descendant had some problems with Microsoft, and the servers were down for like a whole day, right? And there's been some bugs and stuff, but they've been quick to quick to iron those bugs out fast. Let's look at Warframe. So 65, 62,839 on right now, right? So we can look at the last month. So with Warframe, it has kind of been low engagement, if I'm being honest, right? I, I guess Warframe players are waiting for the 1999, they're waiting for Soul Frame, they're waiting for stuff like that. So the game, to me, has never been super popular, like, over the last couple of years in my opinion it's been popular but it hasn't hit destiny 2's heights but the thing about it is the first descendant is hitting your destiny 2 heights and more you see so uh, i think what it is with warframe you know they're waiting on the soul frame you know they're waiting on the next stuff they had the tenocon stuff that looked amazing there was three or four hundred thousand people watching that stuff on twitch so the, there is interest in the warframe and the 1999 stuff looks amazing. Even to me, it looks amazing. But uh, I think with the Warframe, players come and go more as well. And it suffers from that problem. Um, and it's the same thing. They need a new IP, but they're getting a new IP. Soulframe, it's a new IP. That's going to interest players to come back to come back and try stuff. Um, and that's what it's all about, really. Whereas First Season doesn't need a new IP because it is the new IP. It just come out. Henceforth, you're getting all this attraction, and the game's actually good when you start to play it. There's some problems with first descent as well. Don't like believe everything. Like there, there, there is some. It's not a perfect game, but for what it tries to be, it's a good nine out of ten game. For what it tries to be, they can make it better as well. They can make it a nine point five out of ten game. Like I'm somebody who's played loot shoots for years now, and I can tell you, as a looter shooter, what it says on the tin is what it does. It does. Does it over exceed in certain areas? No, though. That's the thing. Whereas Destiny 2 does over exceed in certain areas like raids and stuff and dungeons and stuff, right? And Grandmaster Nightfalls. It over exceeds in certain times, it does, right? But then other times it doesn't, it doesn't get anywhere near where it should be. So Destiny 2 is an inconsistent game. That's the problem. First Sen is far more consistent, but it's only been, he hasn't been out more than a month yet. So it's hard to say exactly how it's going to be, but I foresee the numbers being stable for this game for quite some time, for at least the remainder of this year. Where What it's going to look like, like for 2025, I don't know, but for the remainder of this year, this game's going to do really well. 
all right? And it's shown that on YouTube and Twitch. The numbers on YouTube, Twitch, for, for, for the first descendant, for like people making videos and stuff and streaming it, is really good. So that's my video on all of this. There's some harsh truths, I know, but you've got to tell them. I'm not trying to push you a narrative. Well, actually, I am trying to push you a narrative. I'm trying to push you the narrative of that Destiny 2 isn't the be-all and end-all. You might need to open your eyes, widen them a little bit, and just look around you and just remember that we're not in the golden age of Destiny anymore. We aren't. The golden age of, of the Destiny franchise, in my eyes, is now officially starting to dwindle. That's how I look at it. You can do what you want. No one's to here to tell you what to do, of course. But I can give you uh, some analysis. And that's what I wanted to do. Hope you enjoy. Thank you.